Yeah. Tov, Ezrat Hashem. So, last year we finished in Pasuk Gimel. Yeah, the big, big, big pasuk that basically tells us that you have to follow your beracha. Love that one. Don't spread too thin. When you see a momentum and you see a potential, when you see that the cloud is heavy, then for sure there's going to be rain in that area. Okay? So this is how the beracha comes. And you have to follow the direction of the etz. The direction where the etz go falls, north or south, we explained why the north, why the south, the mm. north and south in the Bet Amikdash represents the menorah, right? The menorah and the shulchan, mm. which both represents chokhmah, wisdom, and the beracha of Parnasa. And when you follow where the etz goes, you benefit from its fruits or from its presence. Because like Rashi says, like the Mitzvah David says, when, if you follow the, the Chacham, if you follow the, 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 the wise, the Chacham, the, 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 the Talmud Chacham, the Tzadik, yeah, just being in, around him will enhance your behavior, will shine more clarity, and naturally you will, you will gain from, his, from, from, from being close to him. Pasuk Dalet. Shomer Ruach lo izra. Veroe be'avim lo ikso. Says Shalom HaMelech. You need to be proactive. And you need to learn to take risks. Why? Because Shomer Ruach, the person that waits for the wind, lo izra. If, it's, if there's too much wind, it will never end up sowing and, you know, and, and, and throwing the, the seeds in the ground for the, for the plant to grow. Because he say, basically, he's, he needs, he's waiting for the perfect occasion, for the perfect direction of the wind, for the perfect strength of the wind. He says, if you, were, if you wait for the perfect occasion to come and for the perfect opportunity, you're never going to do anything. And then he gives it, he gives a different angle. And somebody that sees that there is uh, the clouds and he waits for the clouds to go in order to, to, uh, to, take, to reap, right? To, to, to get his, uh, to, his, his record, his, uh, to reap, you know? He's never gonna reap, okay? Because he's always focusing on the clouds. <clears throat> Shlomo Amelech brings two opportunities or two situations where a person loses, first of all, time, loses his beracha, and loses his uh, uh, opportunity to trigger a dynamic of beracha. And he refers to these two scenarios as the wind and as the cloud. Both are things that are not tangible. The cloud is, is not tangible. It's, you cannot, it's not because there's a cloud that means that there's going to be rain. To the contrary of what he said earlier, yeah? He says, when you know that there's cloud that it's going to rain, that's where the rain is going to be. But if you try to control the cloud, if you try to wait for the cloud, for the perfect cloud to come, and you, 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 you stipulate, right? You make stipulations. And you, you tend to, uh, uh, it's the world of futures in, the, in, the, in the, the stock market. Futures, yeah? If, if, you, if you live in, 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 in waiting for the future to be, a, for everything to line up, to, for you to invest in futures, you're never going to invest. You see an opportunity, and the problem is, is that you give too much credit, you give too much weight to factors in the equation that you have no control of. This is what Shlomo is coming to say. When 
here, like again, we're talking about risk factor and how to take risks. If you remember, that's that was the intro of what the, the Perek is talking about, the chapter is talking about. Shlomo Amelech tells us in every situation, you have factors you need to take into the equation to make a calculated risk, risk, and sometimes some of the factors of the equation should not be taken into factor when you calculate the risk. Because if you take certain factors like the wind or like the cloud, two factors that you have zero control over. If you implement those factors into your risk factor, you will never be able to make a move. You will never be productive. Here Shlomo Melech very, very carefully dissect a situation and tells us how to approach the assessment of risk. So when we implement that in our lives, in our investments, in our efforts, we need to always ask ourselves, okay, what element or what factor in that operation is in my control? And which part of which factor is out of my control? Due diligence, I need to make. Engagement, I need to make. Structure, I need to make. Relationship and the resourcing, I need to make. But certain things are completely out of control. Can you take, can, can you take into account COVID in, in December last year and say, well, if there's COVID, no, might be dumb. No, nobody took that right. into consideration. But some people, some people are so stuck in their ways, are so fragile in their self-esteem that they need to have a perfect scenario in order, in order to engage. Good? Great. <clears throat> and, 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 I'm sorry? And what he's basically saying is that as long as you can assess the risk and say, I'm comfortable with what I can control and, and, and I understand what I can't control, you, you should move forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. And more so, even if you see that the wind is not in your favor, or if you see that the clouds are heavy and it will rain, Shlomo Amelech says, as long as it's not in your control, do not freeze. Which is so he should have put a Pasuk Gimel maybe after Pasuk Dalit. Which one? Ah. <laughs> no. Because because Pasuk Gimel is a, is a follow-up of Pasuk Bet, meaning that when you engage with Chesed, again, we're talking about risk factors, okay? When you give Chesed, when you give Tzedakah, you take a risk. When you take off your time to help someone, you take a risk, right? You're gambling your time, you're gambling your efforts without a real outcome. Says Shalom HaMelech, it's not true. When you engage and when you help and when you spread of your wisdom, of your money for tzedakah, of your time, your ear, your attention, it always comes back. And when you cover every angle, then you are exposed to the beracha. But the same, do not, do not compare your exposure to eventually be able to get something back out of it and do the same thing when it comes to the parnasa to the, or to chokhmah when it comes to parnasa and chokhmah you have to zoom in follow your beracha wisdom Follow the X, follow the tree. Surround yourself with, with the proper wisdom, with the proper people, with the proper chokhmah, 
with your, your chacham on one end, but also be, focus where your beracha is so that you can benefit from the rain. To the contrary of spreading your chesed. So the chesed is what you give. Pasuk Aleph and Bet is what you spread, what you give. In hope, or based on Shlomo Amelech, it's for sure, one day it's going to come back to you so you're not wasting. You're not taking uncalculated risks. You're not, you're, you're not wasting your effort or your time or your money. But when it comes to take, when it comes to receive, the focus changes. The outlook changes. When it comes about you taking, focus, where, focus on the rain. Focus on the tree. When you're taking parnasa, when, when it's about your beracha that you're taking, when it's about your chokhmah that you're absorbing, stay focused. Don't spread the same way you spread when you help. Good? Why? Because if... You don't do that. If you, do, if, if you mix the two, then you spread too thin, right? In the parnasa. You spread too thin. If, if you don't focus on, on the S, on the tree, and you try to hop from every person, chokhmah, you're going to get confused. You don't have a line of thought. So you, you're going to be exposed to knowledge, but you won't know what to do with it. I mean, you, have, you don't need any rabbi, you have Google. So Google will give you all the answers you want. But the question is, what are you going to do with it? That's why the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot says, Ase lecha rab. You need to have a line of conduct. You need to have a, 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 an outlook, a very specific outlook in life. Because that's how you're going to absorb all the chokhmah that you will gain from your life, from what you're exposed to, and know how to implement it and how to utilize it. The bina, the da'at. Good? That's if you spread. Now, in the contrary, if you zoom in and you expect everything to be aligned perfectly in order to make a move, you're also not, that's the, that's the flip side. You're also not gonna do anything. So he went from, from, that's why it's so, it's so well put together. Right. Got it. Good. Pasuke. Ka'asher en chayodea, and he gives, he gives a, uh, a statement. The same way you don't know ma derecha you cannot predict which direction the wind, the wind will take. You cannot predict. You can assess once there's wind, if the wind goes to the east or to the west or to the north or to the south. But when you wake up in the morning, can you predict where the wind will go? No, you cannot predict. The same way you cannot predict also the contractions of a woman. You never know when it's going to come. You also cannot predict and cannot know the way Hashem dictates. Rashi says, the outcome of wealth of, or being poor. The actual outcome is the emuna. What we know is what we can trigger. But the bracha at the end is the emuna we have in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And this is what connects us to him. Right? So he says, even that, Asher Ya'ase et akol. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu controls everything and makes everything happen. So, we know that certain behaviors based on the Torah trigger certain reaction in the world. Elohim, yep, Elohim. But the ma'asea Elohim, the action of Elohim can change at any time. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu controls everything. 
I, for example, the butterfly effect. You know that if you plant at this period of the year, and if this quality of grain in this uh, with do, uh, this type of uh, of urea in the in the, uh, in the in the in the land, fertilizer with a certain heat with a certain uh, where all this is great, right? And you know that al Piyokim, based on the rules and regulations that Kadosh Baruch put in place, this is the outcome. All this is perfect, correct? That's in my control. But what you cannot control is the butterfly effect. Is a butterfly in Costa Rica that will snap its wind, uh, is its wing, and that will start a tornado, and that will come at the specific time and wipe everything you've done. We have factors we don't know. So says Shalomah Melech, if you want to play God, you're never going to do anything. How many times, how many times a lady goes to the, to the doctor because she thinks she has contractions, she's about to give birth, Next thing you know, four days she's in the hospital, contraction on and off and on and off, or she's going back and forth between the hospital and home because fake news. <laughs> okay? So, says Shlomo Amelech, and again, here he uses two different parameters. And Rabbeinu Bechai is, 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 is addressing those two factors. Factor number one, the direction of the wind. Factor number two, the contractions of a woman. Says Rabbi Behaye, Shlomo Amelech is referring to the Olam Yetzirah. In the Olamot, the four Olamot in the creation, he's refer referring to a factor that comes from Olam Yetzirah. The contractions of the womb, okay, is the reaction of a baby that says, I want to get out. Where is that coming from? Just so I don't know if you guys follow uh, the fundamentals of Emunah, but in fundamentals, I expect. So we have four worlds, four, okay? We have the world of Atzilut, which is the highest world. Under it, we have the world of Beria, the world of creation, which is the world of the Neshamot. Under it, we have the Olama Yetzira, which is the world of angels. And under it, you have Olam Asiya, the world of actions, the physical world. In the womb, the Neshama is being prepped and taught Torah by the angels. When the time comes for the Neshama to get out, there is a certain friction between the Neshama and the angels. The Neshama says, I want to stay in the Olam Beria, the angels say, you need to get out. And this is the contractions. There's a friction between the Neshama and between the angels. So the, the contractions come from which part of the Olamot? From the world of Yetzirah. Says Shalom HaMelech, according to Rabbi Bechaye, the atzamim, the contractions, is not something you, the father or the mother, can control. It's not in your hands. It's an internal conflict there is between two different worlds that you, have, you don't have access to. It's here, it's present, it's real, something's happening. Something's happening, but it's not in your control. So you need to realize that certain things are real, but out of your control, to the difference of what we said earlier. Earlier in the Pasuk, in the Pasuk He, Dalet, what Shlomo HaMelech is saying is that don't take into account factors that are not tangible. The wind, the rain, the clouds, these things go, go, come and go, and it's, it's not something you can even assess. 
Now Shlomo Amir is taking another level. He's saying you have situations that you can assess. You know what's happening. You know that there is, there is a conflict right now. There, there is a real, real interaction that's, that's, being, that's happening as we speak. There's a meeting. There's a meeting between investors, between seller, and they're talking. You know they're talking. You just don't have access to that room. You don't have access. You don't. You cannot speak to the seller. You cannot speak to the, the, his investors. You want to buy. You want to buy, but you don't have access. You don't know who to call. But you know for sure that there's a meaning that's happening. So why drive yourself crazy? You don't know. Now, if, again, we're talking about a case where you have zero access to that room. Not that you know somebody that knows somebody. You have no access. You have no access. So why do you have to drive yourself crazy right now and start thinking, okay, how do I outsmart the system for the seller and his investor to decide to sell to me? Because you access, you have zero access. The difference there is between this scenario and the previous pasuk is that this is something real. It's happening. It's happening. Rob, how about something like COVID. I mean, it's, it's certainly an act of Hashem and it's certainly out of our control, but there's still an element of it that, you know, is affecting everybody very much and you kind of can't predict the future. So if, if, if you speak pre-COVID, nobody can expect anything, right? Nobody was able to take that into consideration, which is the biggest statement of that pasuk. Biggest statement of I understand. But now that it's here, you can assess. Uh, that, exactly. Now that it's here, now you can assess. Now, it's, now you can implement the impact it had on society, Clearly. on the economy, to be able to uh, use the, the way where we are in life in order to assess the risk and the future. Very good. Got it. Now, And this is what you need to keep in mind. You cannot know the f and have the control over the full picture. You can only control your actions. You can only control what's in front of you, what's in your hand. But you cannot control everything. You cannot control. Butterfly effect. COVID and co. You cannot. You cannot. Good? Yep. Yes. So what's so what should we do? So okay, thank you. You told me what I need to do to protect my future in case I have a problem. You told me how to focus on my beracha on my chokhmah, and not use the spreading as a universal behavior. Great. You also told me not to be the opposite of all this and to be stuck and so careful and so, and so control free of, and not to take into consideration things that are completely irrelevant and not to take into consideration factors that are happening but have zero control over. Yes? I'm recapping everything. So, okay, so what do I do? Ah. Baboker, Pasuk Vav. Zera et zarecha. Vela erev al tanach yadecha. In the morning, make sure to plant your seeds. Sow your seed in the morning. Vela erev. And in the evening, don't hold back your hand from sowing your seed. Because you never know the outcome of your effort and which one will be the true yield. Maybe both of them will be great. Says Shalom Amelech something fantastic. Never, never rely on your success. In, in the morning when you're young, 
when you're strong, when you're energetic, seed as much, sow your seed as much as you can. Engage, do, plant, try, use all this energy to trigger momentum, to create something. What six six, what doesn't doesn't. But the outlook of life is productivity. Be as productive as possible. Don't focus on the outcome. Who cares about the outcome? Every morning wake up, go to war, fight, yield, create, engage, generate. Use this core. And once the sun starts coming down, when you're getting slowly, slowly older, wiser, more savea, you're more satisfied, you're more stable to a certain extent, do not stop. Do not relax. Do not lean on what you have accomplished until today thinking that that's going to stay status quo and permanent for the rest of your life. No. Keep engaging. Keep creating. Keep developing. It will be on a different capacity. But you have to still engage with the acti proactivity. And why should we have this outlook? Because we never know, and that's what we learned in the past before, what the outcome will be. We have no idea how sustainable what we've accomplished really is. And here Shlomo, uh, Rashi and the Mefarshim bring, that applies to children, if you have children when, you, at your, at, and when you're young, don't say, Khalas, that's it, I have kids. I don't need to have more children when you get older. Why? Because we've seen no alienu situations where uh, the, 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 the father had many children, and when he got old, he said, that's it, I have my kids, and no alienu tragedy came and wiped out the whole family. Eov is, is one of, of, of these examples. So even, even in your ability to have children, don't think it's taken for granted. Yeah, that's all. So Shema Meller says, your outlook, your outlook in life, and how to engage with risk and how to approach the risk is to shift the focus from the paralyzing idea of taking a risk and lose and channeling your thought process into productivity. Because if you focus on the outcome of your efforts, you're gonna freeze. For good reason or bad reason? You're gonna freeze because you did great and khalas, I'm good. I have my money in my account. I don't need to be productive. I'm covered. I can live the rest of my life comfortably. Or you're gonna freeze because you were not successful and you're gonna say, look, I'm a loser. I'm a loser. Everything I do fails. So what's the point? So the the, the outlook of effort in the outcome never brings a person a long-lasting benefit. So what should it be? Never focus on the outcome. Only focus on your effort on the willpower to do. Let, it, let the outcome in the hands of Hashem. Because it's the truth. The outcome is Maaseha Elohim. And we don't have 
the information of Maaseha Elohim. So it's the full, the, 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 the dumbest be, like, behavior to think that you need to focus on what you're going to get back, what you're going to yield, when the, when the yield is not in control anyways. But die, it's in your hand to do your best efforts. But you're missing too much information to focus on that in order to, to stimulate yourself and work. And here in this pasuk is hidden a very, very important concept, tremendous concept that is brought in the Zohar, Akadosh, that the Ramchal uses a lot. The Zohar says, Koach atnua kovea midat haratzon. Your physical activity defines your will power. What does that mean? The more you are proactive physically, the more your will power grows. The less you are physically proactive, and we discussed it, the less you have a will power to engage in something. And I always bring the example of the depressed person. Somebody that's depressed, he's in a vicious circle because he has to slap himself, he has to drag himself, his actions are heavy. Why do you snap out of it? Be proactive, run. Run to go somewhere to do something. And it will spark, says the Zohar Kadosh, it will spark your willpower. Here, Shomu Amalek, what does it tell us? Do not create dependence. Do not de have your willpower dependent on your, the outcome of your efforts. Do not have your willpower dependent on the outcome of your effort. But instead... But but Rob, in a in a certain situation that, as you said in the meeting, there's people in a meeting, and you don't you don't know if you did something, perhaps it was wrong, and the outcome is good. Could be the other way, that you make mistakes and and things go good. Or looks it good. You make it looks really good. good. Or looks good. Okay. How do you know the, if the outcome was of your efforts or of Hashem? It's never. It's never. That's exactly the point. That's the point. The outcome is Maaseha Elohim. Maaseha Elohim. That's the outcome. And this, you can never know. You never know. You never know. You wow. have to have a Muna. <laughs> you have to have a Muna that the outcome, if you have a clean heart, and you try your best, and you do your best, you have to have a muna that whatever outcome comes is ma'aseha elokim. It's for your best. Good? That's regarding the outcome. Now, instead of the having the, your willpower dependent on the outcome of your efforts, mistake, and that's what Shlomo is, Amelech is teaching us right now. He says, have your willpower dependent on your proactivity, on your effort. Can you explain that? Yes, it's the concept of the Zohar Kadosh. Know that your willpower is in your hands. And the more you're proactive, the more you're engaging, the more your willpower will grow. So now, the willpower is, is the energy that push, allows you to go forward, right? So if it's independent from the outcome, and it's dependent on your actions, you boost your willpower all the time, as long as you want to be proactive. 
But if your willpower is dependent on your outcome, you can end up crashing very fast. Because most of the time, the outcome is not what we expect. So the outcome will, will, will take down and, 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 and destroy our willpower. And then we enter a vicious circle of sadness, of darkness, and we start believing that we're failures. This is the secret of what Shlomo Amelech says in Mishlei, Sheva Yipot Tzadik Vakam. The Tzadik falls seven times and can still stand up. Because the Tzadik does not have his willpower dependent on his outcome. He doesn't define himself by, his outcome, by the outcome. Because if he would have, he would have defined himself as a failure. He fails seven times. I always give this example. You take a surgeon. Okay, first surgery kills the guy. Second surgery kills the guy. Third surgery kills the guy. Chalas, it's not going to get you seven surgeries. We're going to tell him to pack up and go home. Become a plumber. So how can you stand up after, after seven failures? Because you don't, allow, you don't connect the outcome to your identity. The outcome is Maaseh HaElokim. There's too many factors that, we are, that is out of our control and that is unknown to us for us to dictate or rely on an outcome, on a, the expected outcome. Uh, Rav, I have a question. Sure. When going back to the idea of the morning and the evening, you meant it's, it mentioned something about in the evening that you you reap your what you've what you've sown, what you've what you've planted. Can you expand on that a little bit? What did you mean by that? So what Melech says that the outlook in life, okay in order to be productive and to be successful is to always focus in what's in your hands to do, what's in your control, which is what? The effort, the proactivity. Your proactivity is not dependent on how energetic you are, how strong you are, how fresh you are, how young you are. Because even when you're old, you can be proactive. So if your outlook in life is dependent on your proactivity and not dependent on how much koa or how much strength or vivacity do you have in order to be proactive or on the expected outcome, then you're, you're always fresh. Your vivacity is always rejuvenated. It doesn't matter if you're 20 or you're 70. You have 80 year old people, they're more proactive than 20 year olds. And they're always running and doing and calling and they get, and you're like, where, where is that coming from? It's, a, it's outlook of the person in life. Do you understand? Shoma Menef says the, your willpower is dependent on your proactivity. Your proactivity is you, is you. It's, it's, it fuels itself. You have the willpower, you're proactive. You're proactive, you have more willpower. You have more willpower, you're more proactive, you're more proactive, you have your willpower. This capsulates and isolates your interaction in life and your productivity in life from number one, your physical energy and strength when you're young versus Less, less energy and freshness when you're old, okay? And it also isolates, encapsulates your productivity from the outcome. You're no longer proactive based on the outcome. You're proactive because I need to be proactive. I need to be alive. And to be alive and to have the power and to have the desire to do anything, I want to do it, I do it. So in whose end this koach is in? In yours. And that you're fully in control. When it says in the evening, don't hold back from reaping your reward. Didn't we say that? What does that mean? Isn't that thinking about the outcome? No. no. 
Al tanach yadecha. Ve la erev, he doesn't say, he says, uba erev al tanach yadecha. Do not stop sowing your seed. Oh, do not keep planting. Okay, so I just, yeah, that's what I was confused. I, I wrote the notes wrong. All right, thank you. Do not stop planting. So keep planting. Exactly. Even when you... Exactly, exactly. Right, and it's not uh, just talking about the evening. It's talking about when you get older also. Yes. So that is the evening. Yes, yeah. That's what it means. That's what it means. Basically, no, I think when, when you, met, you missed a word. What I was saying when I said, I said, do not rely on what you've accomplished when you're young no. to th and don't think it's a status quo that will stay, that will carry you until the end, because we never know what can happen. Right. See? Unbelievable, amazing. Umatok haor, one more pasuk, one more pasuk. The sweetness of the light, the tov la'inaim, it's delightful to the eyes, lir'ot et ha-shamesh, to see the sun. Says Shlomo HaMelech, the following. It says, when you understand how sweet light is, how beneficial light is, and the all in this content, context is what? Is positivity. So there's a difference between light and between looking at the sun. Light is the outcome of the sun. Right? The outcome of you being positive is sweet, makes you feel good. Matok is a, is a taste, right? Taste is a sense. It's subjective. So the light, the impact of the light, the outcome of your positivity is subjective, but it's sweet, makes you feel good. Motivating. But the looking at the sun, sun is something that's objective. The sun is the sun. Nobody can, no can, nobody can uh, dispute. When everybody looks at the sun, you look at the sun. The sun is the sun. Yeah? You can benefit from the light of the sun in a different way. But when you look at the sun, this is objective. So when you look at the sun, it's, you're, then it's tough. The good, the true good, the true purpose, yeah? the crystallization of your effort, your realizing of your potential in this world is to look at the sun. This is the talk. When you focus on the Shemesh, when you focus and what is the sun, what is the sun? It's the Nishama. Right? Tahat Hashemesh, below the sun, above the sun. When you look at your neshama, when you have in mind, when you focus on the bigger picture of the outcome of life, then you are in a dynamic of tov. Then you are realizing your purpose in creation. And the beauty is, is that not only that you are in the right frame of mind and in the right direction, but you emotionally benefit from its light as something that is sweet. Your life becomes sweet. Beautiful. Oh. Amazing, Rav. So much, Rav. Amazing, amazing class. This is Shlomo Amelech. This is Shlomo Amelech. Amazing.
amazing. No. Thank you so much, Rav. Thank you. Right, have Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. 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 See you. Bye, Andy.